Hello everyone, before I discuss today's product, I have to tell you about my standards for reviewing. I believe a product should at least be decent and valuable to the audience to be worth discussing. If a product is as useless as poop, especially if it's priced as high as gold, wouldn't I just be wasting my time? The 100 Ultra smartphone I've not neglected, but my recent tests have been disappointing. It has failed to impress me in any regard. Not only does it carry over the issues from the Pro Plus model of the last generation, but in some aspects, it's worse than the X100 Pro. The actual user experience is in stark contrast to what's advertised and what self-media hype up. People still nag me to talk about the 100 Ultra. Now, since many Vivo stores have demo units, I was able to use one to record some test footage without a contract. With only these limited samples, I could replicate almost all the issues I encountered with the X100 Ultra. So today's episode aims to shut the naysayers up and show how months of Vivo's efforts have amounted to nothing significant. However, I'll start with some positives to save data for those who like hearing good news. The new 100 Ultra finally supports Dolby Vision filming, which is available available on all three camera ranges and allows for lens switching during recording, similar to the feature on the X2XX. Additionally, it can shoot 8K videos and supports 4K 120fps shooting. A pleasantly surprising feature is the 3.7x 200 megapixel telephoto lens, which supports 4K 102fps and has macro capabilities. Using this telephoto lens for 4K 102fps video can enrich the variety of perspectives in your footage, which I consider a significant advantage over the Mi 1.4 Ultra. In the Pro mode, stabilizer can be turned off. Like with the 14 Ultra, you can fully utilize the CMOS's image field to shoot 16.9 4K 6fps video, offering a wider view and better quality, and it also supports log video mode. All the video features previously described are not available on the 100 Pro. It might be speculated that this is due to the 9300 chip's less powerful video processing compared to the 8G3, which is partly why the chip's mini imaging system is not as appealing to me, despite any hardware similarities that may exist. Yes, the price is similar, but you get fewer usable features. Okay, here's where I've listed all the pros. Moving on, I'm going to discuss the issues with unpacking the Ultra. For those who can't accept the reality or prefer to live in their own bubble, you might want to leave the video to avoid getting angry, which isn't good for your health. Alright, has everyone left who needed to? Then I'll begin. The device supports 8K video recording at a standard 102 bifurcations but only with the main camera, which I don't understand. The telephoto can shoot 4K at 120 bifurcations, but can't produce an 8K video with its 200 megapixel capability, so if you need a clearer image, that's a weakness. We've mentioned that the telephoto does support 4K at 120 frames, but digital image stabilization is disabled then, Although optical image stabilization is active, you can tell from the footage that when the lens moves, the lack of smooth stabilization is evident. It's jerky and thicky, and not even a stabilizer can fix those hiccups. The primary camera's 4K at 120 FPS additionally turns off digital stabilization. Yet, when employing the gimbal, you observe noticeable distortions in the image quality, akin to jello, which seems inferior compared to solely utilizing the Ultra's optical image stabilization to achieve fluid camera motion. Moreover, at 4K 182 FPS, the focus problems become significantly evident. Professional mode allows you to disable stabilization, but it turns off digital and optical stabilization, including gimbal support. Handheld footage clearly shows, compared to the 14 Ultra with optical stabilization, the image shakes as if it had Parkinson's. I don't understand why 4K at 102 with optical stabilization can't use the same strategy in professional mode. Professional mode can shoot log video, but only with the main camera and at a maximum of 4K and 310 frames. The 14 Ultra can shoot 4K at 610 frames log video. So comparatively, if you want a double improvement, the gap with the Ultra is noticeable with jerky footage, and you can't achieve the same level of performance increase. Plus, this log video doesn't look as good as the 10F Ultras, moving at just 30 frames. 
There's still plenty of noise and imperfections, including a ghosting effect when subjects move. Sure, some might argue it's a pro-level feature not intended for casual use. Ignoring the number of regular users who purchase top-tier devices, should we overlook flaws in a pro mode of such a device? As for me, I'm no expert, simply shooting on 4K 60fps. Is it time to halt? The device quickly overheats, warning of potential recording limitations. The 14 Ultra endures the same rigors without issue. Yes, it heats up, but as recording continues, the autofocus becomes erratic. With the person afar, autofocus is still inconsistent. Dad, mom and dad. However, with a subject present, the backdrop must remain sharp, taking cues from Comrade Nikon. Post autofocus chaos, the room's stability declines, mirroring the unresolved gimbal issues from Charju Zero Pro Plus. Should the main camera falter, that's one thing, but then the zoom lens acts up, getting worse with duration. Switching to the ultra wide, it stabilizes, a temporary relief until you notice the lack of optical stabilization for the ultra akin to having no kidneys to avoid stones. Once stable, the video then skips frames, displaying a 4K 60fps recording and a 30fps preview. What countless 8 signify? 8-8, eight eight, take a look at this clip. The top right corner shows 3840 by 2160 only at 4100 fps, meaning the video's average frame rate has already dropped from 60. But actually, while I was shooting this video, the display was set to 4K 60fps Dolby Vision, and the initial footage was fine. You can see the footage is quite smooth, but from here, as I play it frame by frame, 12 one 2 one 2 one 2 one 2, one, two, one, two it's clear that the Ultra's 4K 60fps video has dropped to 4K 30fps, with two frames being exactly the same. The video also shows an average frame rate of only 48 FPS, which looked quite normal when playback started. And from here, the frames start dropping. When the movement is more pronounced, it's clearer to see, each one blowing in the wind. But we vision on, one cannot last more than a few minutes before getting breathless. So much for being fat, can't even handle mom. Plus, during filming, the preview colors look odd. When we review the footage, everyone looks jaundiced. No wonder it's unsustainable. So, can I just not use Dolby Vision and switch to normal mode? When I zoom in, the whole screen freezes up on me. Why not exit the camera app to Out of sight, out of mind. I won't mention how, when not recording video, switching between the main camera and telephoto, you can feel significant vibration from the large lenses inside. And those who rarely shoot videos might say they mainly take photos. Let's discuss photo issues before looking at them. The first issue is the lack of the H1 IC file format, like Xiaomi and Oppo's efficient HAF storage format. Let's compare. An Oppo photo is just over 2 million yalupai, Xiaomi's is 1.2 million yalupai, and a Vivo is 4.3 million yalupai. This means a Vivo Ultra Photo occupies almost 3 times the space of a 13 Ultra Photo. Now consider an ultra-wide photo. Oppo's is 2.1 nmia, Xiaomi's 1.4 minatobai, and Vivo's 5.4 minatobai, again almost triple the space. Imagine if you take many photos, the same number on a 14 Ultra would mean a 256GB storage acting as 512GB, while on a Vivo you might need 1TB just to match. I don't understand why we have 8K, 4K and 120fps log, but no hype. Despite file sizes being 2 to 3 times larger, what's the difference in picture quality? Let's zoom in and look. The resolution for these photos, as everyone can see, is 4096 by over 3500, so they're the same. Focusing on the distant counter, it's evident that the Vivo Ultra still over sharpens like previous models, showing pixelation. Meanwhile, Oppo and Xiaomi show a less sharp, more natural image, but with issues at the edges. They don't offer hike, yet with files two to three times larger, the photos are produced. What about the image quality? Let's take a closer look because these photos, as everyone can see, are 4096 by over 3500 pixels. Same market resolution. Look at the counter in the distance. The sharpness of the Vivo Ultra is evidently overdone, revealing obvious pixel blocks, while Oppo and Xiaomi, with a generally less sharp picture, appear more natural, though not without issues around the corners. When evaluating the resolution of camera lenses, you might find that the middle differences make the Ultra seem like it has poorer resolution. 
The left side appears blurry, as I have previously mentioned when comparing the 13 Ultra to the 14 Ultra. My 14 Ultra has a slight optical axis shift issue, yet upon comparing the images, the Breakdown Ultra, with its average lens quality, does not seem to have inferior resolution in contrast. Moving on to the ultra wide angle photos, after enlarging the images, which are all 4096 pixels, the 100.8 megapixel resolution clearly reveals that the 100 Ultra has sharper image quality. In comparison, the X7 Ultra overall picture quality looks better than the X100 Ultra, especially in the corners, which you can see have higher sharpness than the 100 Ultra. It's important to note that both the 100 Ultra and the Split 7 Ultra have the widest 14 mm ultra wide angle lens, but the 14 Ultra has a 12 mm lens, offering a wider field of view. Particularly at the extreme edges, there is a clearly superior resolution because the lens quality is better. As we've compared before, the Difference 100 Pro has intrinsic lens quality issues and requires correction, which compromises image quality. Now let's compare the telephoto lenses. It has only three lenses, so its 3.7 size telephoto is a native lens. Let's enlarge and compare it to the Split 7 Ultra's 3x telephoto. However, the native lens for the Split Knock Split is roughly 65 meter, so when enlarged, you can notice the writing on the wall. Indeed, the 100 Ultra's 200 million pixels offer better resolution. Given that one is 85 millimeters and the other is 65 mm, the longer focal length naturally provides an advantage. But the knock focal knot has a 6x zoom, and the split version Ultra lacks the fourth telephoto lens. So when you compare at the same magnification, it is actually a crop of the large Ultra 4 portion of a 200 million pixel CMOS sensor. After enlarging to examine the resolution, one can indeed perceive the difference as Ultra appears clearer. However, this clarity is not truly captured that way. In fact, it's generated through AI. As we examine the edges later on, you will understand. This compares with the 14 Ultra's 5x telephoto, and upon enlargement, the sharpness feels quite similar, particularly in the upper area where you can see distant writing. At this point, the 100 Ultra is using the 3.7x telephoto to crop and achieve the result. It seems far off, like there's a character, sigh, looks clearer, right? But the practical difference is 5 times that of this long lens, with a relatively large aperture, 2.5 aperture, doesn't feel too different. Think about it. If you calculate equivalent apertures, you'll find that inserting an ultra, when cropped to 7 times ultra, 6 times zoom, and 10 times ultra, 5 times zoom, the effective aperture is almost the same. So in theory, the 1.4 division of SMOS quality should be not too different from the other two phones. In actual shooting, as you can see, the resolution is not much different. Maybe zoom in a bit more, you can look at it, including the distant quality performance, feels like the 8 Ultra 3.7x zoom quality is still acceptable. Okay, let's look at this group of photos. The landscape just now, actually the information wasn't very rich, but photographing people is different. The hair, eyebrows, and textures on clothing are very complex. After zooming in, first impression, oh, feels like the inserted ultra, looks very sharp, very clear, each hair distinctly visible, while the 10 scan cross doesn't seem very clear, the strands are a bit sticky. But I want to tell you, this is the inserted ultra, enhanced by AI. Actually, the photo taken should be like 10 saucy cross. The hair is rather soft, although it's not clearly defined, it looks softer. At first glance, 10 Saucy Cross seems a bit softer, but the 100 different Ultra, you'll find its hair strands not in curves, rather they're twisted as if the girl had permed hair, right? We've mentioned this before when talking about Cross 100 Pro, the twisted situation arises because the original pixels weren't high enough, so there's a staircase pattern between pixel blocks. Then, after AI enhancement, you get this twisted effect, including this child's hair. If you have experience, you can tell it's AI enhanced. For ordinary people, not photographers, they might still feel the different ultra seems clearer. Okay, let's look at the next photo. This is the insert 100 ultra using the native 37 times lens and 14 ultra using 3 times zoom lens. It looks okay. But after zooming in, sigh, insert 100 ultra is not focused. The clothes on the person and the background are not very clear, right? It shows it's not focused. But did you notice, on this not clear person's face, there's a very clear eyebrow, a very clear eye, very clear teeth, and some very clear hair strands, the person next to it too. So this is why I've been saying, insert an ultra. 
If telephoto looks clear, but it is actually AI generated AI fake. This is the same as plugging in 100 Pro, which makes people look very disgusting. So do you accept the performance of such a picture? Anyway, I don't accept it, and I don't like the fake things generated. In fact, if you want to say that AI generation increases clarity, i14 Ultra or Fork 7 Ultra, I can also use any AI software in the later stage to make it clearer. There is no need to let your mobile phone add one such step to me. When we compare the raw format later, I will tell you why this unnecessary step will lose your picture quality. So for the following comparisons, after zooming in, you can take a look at the 14 Ultra native lens on the right it was taken, and the left was generated by 100 Ultra AI. Which one do you like? Do you think the expression of the person on the left is normal? This eyeball is about to fall out. Is this normal? Do you want your family to show that their eyes fall out? Anyway, haha. It's hard for me to comment. At least I don't like this AI generated thing, and it can't be turned off, especially the AI enhancement of text. It will make it look very obvious. So if you like this A performance, then you just need to buy a hundred extra. I don't want, for example, I go out to travel and take a picture of a scenery and take a picture of my own family, but half of the things in it are generated by AI, fake things. Just buy anyone with you. Or buy a coffee. This says that this coffee bean is from Africa, which is very good, but half of it is inferior coffee. Anyway, if you mix it with a piece of coffee, you can't drink it, right? It's just to use the information difference to fool you, and you think this thing is very good. Then the 300 Telephoto and 14 Ultra can have a relatively close focusing distance and shoot a macro effect, but in fact I am testing it. Well, you will find that the closest focusing distance of these two lenses is not much different, but because of the difference, the Ultra has a relatively high number of pixels and a relatively large bottom. So if you zoom in you can you can see that the resolution will be better but I personally feel that the difference is not particularly big in daily shooting including many people who took this macro and put it bigger and put it 10 times or 20 times in such a way it feels very clear so we just said that the things you see are all AI generated and they are all fake and these are high pixel photos let's take a look at 6144 times 8000 and more than 9000 which is 50 million pixels after zooming in to see the exposure of the whole picture, this split ultra is relatively bright and the whole picture is relatively clear, but it's still the same as what we just said. These things are all fake generated by AI. How can they be fake? You can take a look at the poster of Cha Kang Cha. Everyone knows that it has four plain leather and there are some textures on the plain leather. It's quite evident that the texture captured by 100 Ultra exhibits a natural discrepancy. It looks like it's been enhanced by AI, do you see? The texture is very pronounced. Moreover, you can observe very unnatural jagged edges around the lens. Having seen the lens on the 7O, you'd know it's impossible for it to have such artifacts. This indicates that the original ultra-wide angle is also enhanced. When you zoom in, you will discern clear signs of AI enhancement on the 100 Ultra, including the traces of sharpening. The edges here are exceedingly sharp. Take a look under the seat for sawtooth-like artifacts. Can you see them? It's very unnatural. Compared to the high pixel main camera, can you spot any issue with the text now? If you're experienced, it's immediately evident this is AI enhanced, not the true raw output from a 50 million pixel camera. Indeed, the 7 Ultra also has traces of AI enhancement, but not as excessive as the 100 Ultra. On your phone, you can still capture the Oppo logo, but the 100 Ultra swaps it for another brand altogether. The intertwined text here, this kind of output, is the result of AI enhancement. They're just playing with you. If we can't produce it, we'll just AI enhance it. And you wouldn't even notice that this is three times the size. Let's look at the text again, whispered words. It's natural, the edges of the text are softer. The 100 Ultra sharpens it, particularly harshly, especially when you look at... Ah, I'm not sure if everyone can see it clearly on the video platform, but the noise here is very obvious. See? It feels like a high ISO photo that's been extremely sharpened in post-processing. I really dislike this effect. The phone keeps deceiving you. So look at a 5-fold achievement. Because of this high pixel mode, the 100 Ultra lacks a fourth camera, right? So we compare it directly with the native 6-fold zoom. Now take a look at this AI enhanced photo. Compared to the native camera's photo, you can see that there's a lot of noise and peculiar jagged edges. Indeed, in terms of resolution, it's inferior to the native lens and not as natural. However, you see, in places like signboards, where the structure is simple and there's high contrast, AI optimization can be done effortlessly, allowing you to see very clearly. But in areas Areas with complex textures, with a lot of high frequency information, AI immediately struggles, resulting in obvious noise and a severe grainy sensation. A notably poor quality image. We just reviewed high pixel photos, right? It seems the 7 Ultra doesn't have much of an advantage. Now we are starting to compare Vogue style recruitment. On the left is the one with Ultra using Super Raw, and on the right is the 7 Ultra using 
In a previous segment, we discussed the Romax by Rome Max. After updating to the latest Spade 77 Ultra firmware, it boasts a 50 megapixel sensor, as you can see by the resolution of 8192 by 6144. However, the Super Roll mode only captures 10.08 megapixels, and since this version was recently shot, the system has been updated to the latest version 600. Many mentioned that the initial version had poor image quality, but has the updated version truly resolved those issues? Let's examine how it handles highlights and shadows and a just exposure. Focusing on the main camera, we'll check if the dark areas in Spade 7 Ultra have reduced noise. Resolved, they claimed, yet the noise is as prevalent as ever with no details visible, a sea of noise. Actually, many photos in that previous episode were taken with the firmware version 600, but some viewers, seeing only the video from the older firmware's narration session, claimed I had used an outdated version. I purposefully withheld a detailed comparison in a later episode, curious to see who would catch on. Despite their claims, even with the latest update, the noise in dark areas is still significant, and the dynamic range is poor. Regardless of these issues, the resolution in the dark areas is better than that of the Super, especially when you look at the distant painting. With 50 million pixels, the resolution is undoubtedly higher. As mentioned before, the Song Pro also includes AI processing, so nearly no noise is present, but that doesn't necessarily mean it retains detail, right? Examine the counter and see how Spade's extortion crushes it, including the clarity of people and distant text, the benefit of 50 million pixels. Do you perceive the image quality? Now, glance at the very left corner. The script on the wall emerges with crispness. Capturing with this super run, one instantly notices the sharpening traces, while the edges appear more defined. Ah, this is because the quality of its ultra-wide angle lens itself is not good, and the resolution and resolution are not as good as plugging and knocking. So this is why I have repeatedly said that it has a lot of shadow noise, but I still use long bridge claws every day because the resolution of the picture is placed here. No matter how bad it is, it is better than the 400 Ultra. Yes, and this phone is now sold three times cheaper than the 400 Ultra. You can see that the latest version of Fork 7.1 Fork still does not solve the problem of poor exposure. The exposure adjustment is almost raised and the shadow is tripled. Everyone pay attention to see if the texture of this phone is different. 7 Ultra, its texture is relatively delicate. It is relatively high to see that there is no clarity. However, it looks like a very small texture on the edge of the lens. If it is the size of the photo, I will show you that the text is still forked and the fork is clearer. If it is the size of the photo, the 400 Ultra is 25 megabytes because it is only 12 million and the pixels of the fork 7 Ultra are 114 megabytes. Four or five times, although it has better resolution, you must pay attention when you buy it and then compare it with a photo of a person. I I said before that the skin color of the characters is very strange, right? It is very red. I think some people commented that this is called ruddy skin. Oops, thank you so much. I it's okay that people's skin is ruddy like this, but the problem is a hundred ultra worse. You will find that everyone's skin color is the same as shooting a video, and it's as yellow as jaundice. Then in this case, I would rather choose fork to fork to make some later corrections. What's more, after zooming in, have you noticed that it is the text on the human body instead? Is this place particularly clear, especially the two-dimensional pattern? This is what we just said. When the contrast is relatively large, the solid color area is especially suitable for AI enhancement optimization, so it looks very clear, so this is the limitation of AI enhancement. Then look at a comparison of 6 times telephoto. When we were doing a high pixel comparison just now, because this fork is 100 ultra, it has 200 million pixels so the resolution is even higher than that of the fork. The six-fold telephoto and the five-fold telephoto look better, but if you use the raw format with the native lens, can't you see it after zooming in? It is the 50 megapixel gap between the things enhanced by AI and the real native lens that is still very obvious. Then you can also take a look at the people on the elevator in the original work. Personally, I still think that the Cross 7 Ultra is clearer, and the skin color of the characters is much better. If you turn on the Ultra, I don't want to talk about its skin color. Okay, then it's the same as 14 Ultra's Ultra Raw for comparison. They are also 10.8 million pixels. You can take a look. So, let's highlight the shadows and enhance the image to see the resolution. We can observe on the wall poster that under the same pixel count, the 14 Ultra can capture the texture of the material on the poster better, indicating that the noise reduction of the Super Raw on the X7 Ultra might have smoothed out these details. Looking at the far distance, the Ultra shows an exceptionally clean noise profile, which is unlikely without manipulating the image data. As camera shots usually have visible noise in the dark areas, the resolution at a distance remains similar. However, for the ultra-wide angle, despite pushing the highlights and lifting the shadows, one can see the difference in the photos. I personally find that the Ultra, with ROG-style capital white balance, also doesn't handle well, leading to a yellower overall image. 
pay attention to this area, which is not hit by light. You might notice that the 13X is a 12mm ultra-wide angle, compared to the 100 Ultra's 14mm ultra-wide. The narrower field of view ironically results in better edge quality. Notice the wall, can you see the evident layering problem? It could be due to overzealous AI processing or insufficient bit depth resulting in shadows breaking and degraded image quality upon editing. Also the corner sharpness can be compared where the X7 really stands out. In a narrower field of view, the resolution is higher. Look at the right sides, super raw. You can see the sharp edges of the light strip. Do you see it? But the human figure is blurry. In contrast, the 13 Ultra has consistent clarity and noise levels for both the subject and the background, which suggests no AI processing. It is apparent that the super long zoom has been processed to compress highlights and expand shadows, offering three times the sharpness. Considering the Ultra's three-fold zoom has 200 million pixels and larger sensor size, it's reasonable that its resolution surpasses a standard triple zoom lens with macro capabilities. Not a big deal, as Xiaomi has a 5 times zoom, correct? Compare it, and upon magnification, you might find the textures on the poster, and the lines are clearer with the 13, although it seems to have more noise, whereas the Ultra's Super Roll appears very clean. Presenting such images for comparison, some might think that the 100 Ultra performs admirably at first glance, but that may not be the case. As I will explain, we have compared before, and while the 100 Ultra may have undergone AI processing, the 14 Ultra has not. Of course, we could later enhance it ourselves using some AI software software, right? So I right-click to edit and open a third-party AI software. Let's see, how does it perform if the 14 Ultra has AI processing? Let's open two, one to remove noise, and one for facial recovery. Let's make a comparison. You can see before and after I click the mouse, it can switch between images with and without AI enhancement. Notice how much clearer it is? With this comparison, you should be able to see. Have you noticed? After the AI treatment, you'll find that, despite the noise and low resolution issues apparent before, the AI processed image shows more detail, especially in the Ultra's hair strands and clearer face. That's what AI software does. It creates extra details to make the picture clearer, including the clothes. Take a look and you'll find the texture of the clothing is clearer, and the noise on the legs is gone. Isn't it just like using an Ultra Super Raw, or even better than a 100 Ultra Super Raw shot? You can also see more details in this young man's hair, details that weren't there before, and the text in the back. See it? Original straight strokes turned wavy after AI treatment, just like photos taken with an Ultra. It's because the Ultra's photos are processed this way. After AI processing, if you're experienced, you'll know which photos are unprocessed and which are stealthily enhanced with AI to appear more high res. Even if your phone, like the 10 Cross Ultra, undergoes minimal AI processing, you can still enhance the effects later with third-party software. It's the same with the Chiab Ultra. But what if I don't want this AI processing? You can't turn it off with an Ultra. That's why I initially mentioned it's precisely this AI processing that I find particularly annoying. So, all these issues I've demonstrated are reproducible on the display models. In fact, those who got the X100 Ultra early on in the use have encountered various issues. However, because of partnerships, it's not possible for them to tell the public. So why do I feel like all the digital media nowadays are like dogs to their sponsor daddies, saying whatever they're paid to say, treating consumers as gullible as pigs, believing anything they're told? Haven't we learned from the P270 cautionary tale? Sponsored media hype it up first, then consumers who rush to buy on release end up unable to sell it without a significant loss. So, think about it, about the lack of Ultra. Can firmware OTA really fix these issues once it gets to consumers? If Vivo's dev team had the capability, they would have launched it three months earlier. No need to wait till now. The question is how long post-launch we must wait, just like waiting for a plug to be pulled three to four months. By that time, everything's been released. So my current advice on buying a flagship phone is don't buy it now, wait for the first wave of users to deal with the issues, for Vivo OTA to mostly fix the problems, and for the price to drop to a reasonable level. Then it's okay to buy. That's it for today's episode. I hope this is helpful to those wanting to buy the Vivo X70 Ultra.